Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you the simplest way to secure your TP-Link router. In my example, I'm using the TP-Link AXE5400 router, but the instructions I'm gonna show you apply to all TP-Link routers. So let me switch to screen recording to show you all this. So this is the TP-Link administration page, and all the settings I want to show you are under the advanced menu. So click on advanced, and the first setting I'm gonna show you is under wireless. So let's collapse network here and click on wireless on the left and then click on wireless settings. And in wireless settings, in case you have smart connect enabled, you will have here only one SSID. And if your router has Wi-Fi 6E like mine, you will have also the 6 gigahertz SSID. In my case, I dissociated all the bands. So I have the 2.4 alone and the 5 also alone. And the six so the settings i'm gonna show you now we need to do it on all the bands so let's start with the 2.4 gigahertz band under security you need to click on wpa2 psk because this is the default setting of the tp link router and we need to choose wpa3 plus wpa2 so this is a more secure encryption protocol for the router and let's do this also under 5 gigahertz now, there are clients that are not yet able to connect to WPA3 plus WPA2. If you have some clients that cannot connect, revert back to WPA2 on the band that this client uses. And let's go to the 6 GHz. And under 6 GHz, you see that you have only two options, WPA3 and the open option. Of course, we're going to leave it on WPA3. And at the end, click on Save. And then click on OK. Now the next setting is to create a guest network so that not to give the people that visit you the password for your home network. So this way you give them the password for your guest network. So let's go on the left here and click on guest network and here enable one of the bands, any band. I advise you to enable the 2.4 gigahertz band because it's the most compatible one. So click on enabled and for the network name, of course, never leave network names by default. So select the network name here and choose KST, let's say guest and scroll down and under effective time, choose the drop down list and choose four hours. So this way the guest network will disconnect the clients and then they need to re-authenticate each four hours. And this is more secure and under security here, never leave it on open. So click the drop down list and then click on encrypted and then put a strong password for your guests. Here, of course, I'm gonna put any password and this is only for the purpose of this video. And scroll down and here make sure that none of these checkboxes is checked. So the first one will not allow your guests to connect with each other on your home network. And the second one will not allow the guests to access your real home network. And then click on save. Let's continue now with the security. So on the left here, you need to click on WPS and WPS, it is always better to disable it. So let's disable WPS here and just wait for the router to apply the setting. So now WPS is disabled. Let's continue on the left, click on USB. We need to disable all the shares that we don't need. So click on storage sharing and here scroll. And if you don't need the Samba share, disable it. And also, if you don't need the local FTP, disable it also. And let's scroll down and also disable media sharing. And this is, of course, if you're not using these services. So let's click on not forwarding now on the left. And in not forwarding, we need to disable UPnP. And under DMZ, make sure that it is not enabled. Now you see here that the TP-Link router has something called Home Shield. So Home Shield has a basic portion that is free and it has a portion that is a paid portion. I do not advise you to pay for any router security. So here on the left, click on network check and then click on scan and you're gonna see that we have one risk. But this risk, we're gonna accept it because the benefit of this risk outweigh its risk. So this risk is that we enable the guest network. So imagine someone coming to your house just to visit you and he needs or she needs Wi-Fi access and you give them the password for your real home network. This will be a big security breach as opposed to just the guest network enabled. So let's scroll to see. 
So DMZ, it is disabled. Port triggering also, we don't have any port triggering. Port forwarding also, we don't have any port forwarding. And you see the guest network, I'm gonna keep it enabled here. The Wi-Fi password is good, so it's a strong password. And the firmware is up to date. So now let's continue. Let's click on security on the left, and then let's click on firewall. And here make sure that the SPI firewall is enabled and the respond to pings from the WAN is disabled. And this is very important. Respond to pings from LAN, you can leave it enabled. It doesn't bother here. And now other settings also that we need to do on the left here, IPv6. I do not advise you to enable IPv6 unless you have a real use for it. So keep it disabled here. And also, if you're not using a mesh system with your TP-Link router, it's better to disable the mesh so that to prevent someone from maliciously adding a mesh node to your system. So this is easy mesh here and only disable it if you're not using a mesh system. So let's disable it here. And here it is disabled. Let's click on system now. And let's make sure that always firmware update is automatic. So here, if you leave the setup of your TP-Link router by default, it will always enable auto update and this is very good now under administration here you can change the password for your router so this is the password that will permit you to log in to this administration page on your router and make sure that this password is very strong and also that it is different from your wi-fi password and let's scroll here and remote management should always be disabled and local management via HTTPS, also you can enable it. You're gonna have a warning on your browser that the certificate is not trusted, but at least if you enable HTTPS, you're gonna encrypt your connection from your laptop or PC to your router. So I'm gonna enable it here and I'm gonna show you how to log into the router with HTTPS. And let's click on authorize third party services and disable client identification because now if client identification is enabled TP-Link is forwarding your information to third party services so let's disable it turn off and under about also you need to disable the joint experience improvement program of TP-Link I advise you to disable it by default it is enabled so let's disable it now let me show you how the HTTPS will work I'm gonna log out from the router and I'm gonna log back in. And to log back in, you need to go to this URL, tp-link wifi.net. And here, put the password for the login page of your router. And here, by the way, the tp-link router will always invite you to create a tp-link ID. You don't need this. I don't advise you to create one. So let's close it here. And let's see the certificate. So click on not secure here, click here. And this is the certificate. And you see that the certificate is at least encrypting the connection between the TP-Link router and your laptop. If you got any value from this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to take it a notch further, you can always join my channel as a member. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you in the next video.